Okay. Let me see. Move over. <laughs> I get confused about which way to move. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about the last piece of grammar in Unit 7, which is how to form adverbs in Greek. There are a couple of ways, so this is just one of one very common way. And then we're going to go through um, the vocabulary in this lesson. Um, and the, the formation of, vocab of adverbs is um, the equivalent of adding the suffix ly in English, right. like slow, slowly, uh, quick, quickly, and so forth. Um, so the equivalent in Greek is the suffix omega sigma os. Um, so if you have an adjective axios, axia, axion, it, the adverbial form is axios with an omega sigma. And notice the accent just moves up one syllable because it has to, because the, you better find a long final syllable. Uh, here's another example, Kamas. <laughs> Kalos is an adjective with an acute accent on the last syllable, like akakos and agathos. When you make add, add the o suffix to it, um, you get a circumflex over it, so that means beautifully or well. Um, and there are there are hundreds of these. And you'll be able to recognize them. That omega sigma suffix is nice, because yep. it can't be confused with any other. Uh, n uh, noun, noun or adjectival suffix. Well, maybe there's some, there's one. There's always exceptions. Uh, always <laughs> exceptions yeah. All right. Um, and when it comes to vocabulary, before we go on to the vocabulary list, which is on page 178, we want to remind you about page 168, which gives you, which is which is really a golden page for us. Okay, it's the one that gives you the meanings of uh, verbs that we've had which have active and middle forms and, and it gives you the meanings of them in middle in the middle so pow o to stop in the active means to stop somebody else in the middle it means to cease doing something uh, or thuo means to, to have a sacrifice made okay in the active uh, to, to make a sacrifice in the active or sacrifice an animal and it means to have it made uh, on your behalf in the middle, stuff like that. So there's a, a li lovely list there, and it's the best way to get a feeling for what the middle is in contrast to the active. All right, um, but now let's look at the vocabulary words. Let's start with the verbs, okay? There are three new verbs in this lesson. There's uh, klepto, the verb to steal, um, sozo, the verb to save or preserve, and, um, and lepo, the verb to leave. Of these, the most important and the most different is lepo, because it's mm -hmm. our first verb which has a second aorist, mm -hmm. a strong aorist. Um, but it's a nice verb. The principal parts are nice because you see the alternation between the eval form of the root lape. So you have a form with loip, um, mm -hmm. with an o, and you also have a form without the e or the o, namely lip. So lepo is the present. Lepso, with the s suffix, is the future, as you'd expect. Elipon, without the e or the o, is the strong aorist. Notice the ending on. It's not an s-a aorist. Then the perfect is le loipa, with the o. Le lemai in the perfect passive or middle. And alephthane, again, with the e-i form in the aorist passive. So this means leave, leave behind or abandon. The verb klepto uh, also exhibits some of this behavior. Klepto to steal. Um, it's klepto. The future is klepso. The stem is klep. K-L-E-P. Okay. So eklepsa is the aorist. Keklopha. Uh, here you go. You've got your O form of the root. Klep becomes klop. And then the P gets aspirated to a phi to make your active perfect. Keklemai. Again, reverting to the epsilon form of the root. Klep, keklepmai became keklemai, and eklpain, okay, without any vowel, became eklapain. That A is not a substitute for an E or an O. It's what happens when you have E, K, L, P, okay, the form without any vowel. You can't do that anymore in Greek. Originally it was eklpain, a, a vocalic L, and then that became either eklapain or ekalpain. Uh, and one, one, one of the two gets generalized, and in this case it's the clap form. So there are, there are down derivatives from this. There's kleptes, kleptu, a person who steals, that is a thief, and klope, the abstract noun, which means theft, and has the O grade form of the root. All right, um, 
You also get some adjectives uh, in this list. Let's just go through go through this the list. I cross, I scraw, I scraw. Notice you've got a row before the us, so the feminine in form has a long alphas where you'd expect an eta, and it means ugly, shameful, or disgusting. It's the opposite of kalos. Okay, I cross. So it's it's not beautiful. It's ugly and it's shameful. It's ignoble behavior and stuff like that. Um, the book sneaks in another pronoun here, the word for another or other, alas, ale, and notice the neuter form of it is ala, like a cana. Mm -hmm. Okay, the neuter nominator singular and accusative singular ends in an omicron. That's a sign that it's an, a pronoun. So that can mean other thing, okay, uh, another thing. It As an adjective, it can also mean the rest of. So alloy can mean the rest of them as well as the others. Hoi alloy. You say that often in Greek, the rest of them as much as the others, hoi alloy. Um, there's the preposition ano without, okay, which governs the genitive. It's a separation genitive, apart from or without is what it means. Um, we get the noun gramma. This is the noun, the neuter noun derived from the root graf to write with the double mu, gramma, grammatos, from which we've got grammar and all those things. It has some interesting meanings in the plural. In the singular, it means a letter of the alphabet. In the plural, it means, can mean, ta grammata can mean the alphabet as a whole, or letters or documents, okay, things written in letters, okay. Um, the next word is another derivative of the root grapho. Um, it's graphe, okay, uh, which you'd think would mean writing because those a nouns are usually abstract nouns, but it's become specific and it means an indictment or a charge or a writ, depending on what your legal system is, okay? So you can say it's a, uh, somebody can be pr pr prosecuted on a graphe of hubris, an indictment of hubris or impiety or stuff like that in Greek legal systems. Um, now we get the adjective delos, dele, delon, which has, as far as I know, no cognates in English. Mm. Funny word, a very common word in Greek that means clear or visible. Delos, dele, delon. Um, this has a negative form, adelos, adelon, a compound form. Notice it has only two uh, uh, forms, one both masculine and feminine, adelos, and one neuter, adelon. That means unclear or uncertain. Um, the book also includes in the vocabulary the new particle combina combinations which mark a wish optative optionally. Um, that's agar, that doesn't mean cause if, and aetha. But there are places where agar does mean cause if, and you have to watch out, okay? Um, there's also the adverb there, a k, which gives us the demonstrative pronoun a k nos. We talked about that. Another noun is hegemon, hegemonos, um, a word derived from the verb that means to lead, and that means a leader. In English, we have the abstract noun from this hegemony, mm -hmm. which means leadership or uh, or authority over a group. Um, there's a new particle, and it's a great one, a really common one in Greek. It's un, O-U with a circumflex N, and no H. Um, and the book translates it then or therefore. It's a continuative particle. In other words, what it means is that the sentence which is starting continues logically and otherwise along the same lines as the previous one. So I think I think a more a better use of, translation of it is and so, okay, uh, rather than, than then, which is what the book gives you, or therefore. Um, they give you one of the words for poem next, poema, which is cognate with English poem, um, an abstract noun of the third, a noun of the third declension, rather. It's not abstract at all, it's concrete. Poema, poema, tos, ta, like soma, soma, tos, ta. They give you the word for public speaker or rhetorician, which also means any kind of politician is a regular kind of generic word for people in a political life world because in order to succeed in politics you have to be a public speaker in the Athenian world. So it's rhetor or rhetoros from which we get the word rhetoric and it tells you the Greek word for rhetoric which is rhetorike. Um, that's the adjective from rhetor in the feminine nominative singular. Why you may ask? Well it's shortened from 
rhetorique techne, the technique of public speaking, right? So uh, that just got generalized, and so you dropped off the techne. Um, yeah, I left out this verb, and I, I talked about two of the three verbs, but I forgot about the third one, which is sozo. The, there's one cool thing about sozo is that it has an iota subscript in the present system, sozo. It's really so izo, okay, and the iota has become an iota subscript because that's a that's a, a present suffix for verbs and it's the same as the ize suffix in english like computer computerize okay um, but that idzo suffix disappears outside of the present even the future doesn't have it so it's so so no iota subscript esosa no iota subscript sesoka no iota subscript and so forth okay i think the principal parts are easy and it means to save or preserve um, uh, there's a, a noun from it, solter, means a person who saves, a savior, okay? And the last item in the vocabulary is a really uh, important concept in Greek, time, or timeis is the genitive, and he, a noun of the techne type, um, and it translates it properly as honor. You could also translate it, uh, maybe more vividly for us, as prestige. Um, uh, in classical Greek society, is uh, is is really a society in which honor and prestige are extremely important. Okay, mm -hmm. in other words, what we're talking about is a system in which you have a, a very strong sense of community, and uh, um, almost everything you do is public. Okay, a Greek city state is like a village, and everybody knows what everybody else is doing, and um, and what your team a is is where you stand uh, in a hierarchy that's constituted by the group. <laughs> okay, and everybody knows where you stand. Okay, so if you do mess up, you're you go down a notch or ten. Okay, um, so so there are people. Uh, you behavior the sanction for bad behavior is that you you lose you lose respect in the eyes of your of your peers. Okay, whereas our culture has some of this here and there. We're into guilt instead of loss of honor as punishment. Right. Okay.